The reason why we worship Him is because of who He is. It is not really because of what He has given us. Whether He gives us something or whether we don't have, we still worship. It's just God all by Himself. I want, I'm starting on again to establish or re emphasizing on the fact that the most important thing in this season of fast is your worship not your prayer point last sunday i tweeted on the topic i talked of some worship and prayer just the god that is on the video and the message will be up on youtube so that people can listen to it if you have the revelation of who god is you will never get tired of worshiping him i share the scripture with us i will read it and then i will start from there before i will go into my teaching this morning that i titled a system called babylon but I want to re-emphasize again on this issue of worshiping God and the reason why we worship Him even when it seems like there is no obvious result. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 7 to 10. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. He says that what God had prepared, not what he is going to prepare. The Bible says that God is the God that finishes the end even before he begins. And so whatever he intends to do through our lives is already a finished thing in his sight. We are only joining into it through time and process. So if God has ordained that you will be a millionaire, before God you are already a millionaire. That is why through our scripture when angels are added or when angels encounter men, they call them by their original ordination before God. For example, when the angel came to Gideon, they called him the almighty man of valor. Yet Gideon looks weak. When they encountered Mary, they say you are highly in favor. When the first day Jesus met with Peter or Simon, called him that he shall be known as the rock. Yet that was still a weak Peter who even let that went ahead to deny him three times. Abraham, the Lord changed, God changed his name to Abraham. Abraham means father of nations, Sarai. God changed his name to Sarah, mother of nations. Yet they don't have one single child. So maybe if you have this revelation primarily, you will know that before God, you are already an accomplished man. God is standing between you and the fulfillment of your destiny is only time because when God deals with men, he submits to the principle of timing. And the reason for timing is he gives us the opportunity to mature into that coordination. He gives us the opportunity to grow through process into that coordination. So while we are worshiping God, it is not really because of what we have. It is what we know by revelation we are already having. I'm not going to get married, I'm already married. I'm not going to have a car before God, I already have it. I'm not worshiping him because I have billions. Before God, I have all things. I am rich. I am prosperous. If you are waiting until you see things before you start worshiping God, you don't have faith. Because God calling those things that be us as though they were. Because really, they were. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 says that we do not look at the things that we can see, but we focus on those things that we cannot see. Now let me use Jake Joseph as a case study on this issue of worship. You know the Bible scripture I shared captures that we know by the Spirit of God. It says that I am not, they have not heard it. But the last line says that God has revealed it by the Spirit. 
have stopped with us here that you can know the will of God by the Spirit of God, you will know that. But our limitations as men is that we don't know the ways God intends to fulfill, God intends to follow to achieve that vision. Primarily, every single one of you who have the Holy Spirit, you already know what you will become. Primarily, some of you already know that you will be a heavily anointed man of God. Before I started working in the supernatural, as something within me already tell me that you will walk in the gifts of the Spirit in a strange way in the miraculous. I already know it, but yet there was no result. So when the Bible says that we know it by the Spirit, yes, you will know. So for Joseph, he saw through dreams how the star and the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars were bound to him. So he knew there was something about his destiny that has to do with kingship. It is the same thing. The, the, the book of Acts, I believe from Acts chapter 7, when Stephen started preaching, he was narrating the life of Moses. He said because Moses knew, and he was hoping that the Israelites would also know that through him God will deliver them out of bondage. So he knew his ordination early at age 14. But what he doesn't even know is how God intends to fulfill that ordination. And that is where we make mistakes as men. We begin to initiate our own, what I call it, our own way to hoping that's what God wants to use to fulfill it. But I think it was in Isaiah 55. And the Bible says that just as the heavens are very far from the earth, that's how no, uh, um, the, the thought of God is far from our thought and then His ways, far from our ways. God has His own ways. So that we know it. But our limitation now, even though I know that, we have, that this is a global ministry, but the limitation now is that I don't really know the ways of God, how God intends to carry it out. That's a limitation already. So let me use Joseph as a case study. Okay, Joseph, even though you know you will be a king, how will you even pray that prayer? Because you can only pray what you know. Joseph cannot start praying. Okay, Lord, let my brothers hate me. Lord, let my brothers sell me. Then make sure that it is this guy and what will buy me. And then, Lord, let my first wife tempt me. And then, Lord, with all of those things, make sure I'm sent to the prison. And in that sense, the Lord, please let the servants of Pharaoh misbehave so that they will come into the prison. And then, Lord, give me the body to interpret their dreams. And then, Lord, after a while, let them be released. And the guy that is going back to Pharaoh, and then, Lord, please so put it in his mind to remember me. And then, Lord, give Pharaoh a dream that no man can interpret. You can't pray that kind of prayer. Are you seeing the mystery of your destiny? You don't even know what you want to pray. That, that's what the scripture says. So if you now know that you don't know what you ought to pray, instead of trying to waste your time all the time asking and praying, start worshiping God. That way is, you know, that is will you know. Thank you for you made me a global voice. Because I don't know how you intend to do it, but I'm thanking you already because it is prepared before you and I trust you to fulfill. And um, I think that's Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. What was right into the church at Philippi it says that he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to finish it. So I worship him that I know I trust you, you will fulfill it. There are many things in your destiny you don't know. There are many gaps in this thing. And no man on earth will beat his chest to tell you, I know how I, I came here. No, that's a mystery. So for the fact that you know God's plan and purpose for you, you don't know his ways, the means, the methodology he intends to follow to achieve it. So instead of all the time, what is prayer? Because we like praying, God, give me, give me those you're asking. Then worship him for that is that is will you've discovered. Thank you for the wonderful husband you've given me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my destiny. I know it is glorious. I know you've prepared something wonderful for me. Thank you for my global ministry. You are worshiping him because you don't even know how he intend to carry it out. But faith, by faith, I worship you. I know you are faithful to finish it up. The young girl, Hadassah, we let her know as Esther, never knew that she would be a queen. 
Don't even assume that she has a problem that there is something for her in the throne. She never, she can never predict how God will achieve that. How do you want to pray that prayer? That first they will misbehave so that I can come in. You can't even pray it. Are you seeing the weakness of this asking, asking all the time? Because you don't even know what to ask. So don't waste your time of prayer asking because you will ask and miss. Confront that period to thanking God. Abraham was asking for a child, but that was really not what God planned. I says he has not entered the heart of men what God has prepared. You don't know it. I don't know it. I know you have big plans for 2024. He has not entered that heart. God's plan will always exceed your plan. So thank Him in all things to be thanks. Abraham was just, he, he even came to a point, said, okay, that thou might bless Ishmael. Just bless Ishmael, I'm okay. God said, no. In Isaac shall thy seed be born. By the time we got to Genesis chapter 22, when God was releasing the flesh from him, he says, In thy seed shall all the whole nations of the earth be blessed. So God was literally willing, willing the earth to that man. God willed the entire earth to that man. Are you seeing the limitations of men? So I tell you, there is something God has prepared for you that you've never dreamed of. There is something God has prepared for you that you've never thought of. There is and that's the mystery. Even Satan don't know it. Hopefully tomorrow I will teach you the topic I call Holy Spirit. The all-knowing God. And hopefully tomorrow God will the grace to look at it. That's the mystery. He said that this hidden wisdom. If Satan had known, the first proof to show that he is not all-knowing is that he would have killed Jesus. That's one of the proofs. There are still things in this kingdom. I thought it was Sunday, and you are a believer, it's a sealed thing. We saw that in the future chapter 1 was 13, that we were sealed with the Holy Spirit. It's sealed, Satan cannot, Satan can't, he, he doesn't know what you will be. He can't, he doesn't. He can be moving around, just praying to it. He's hoping that you will reveal the next step to him, he doesn't know it. So the reason why even you don't know it, God is not hiding it from you. God is keeping it for you. So even if the time comes tempting you, you don't even know it. So the much you can maybe if you are talking, you tell people, yes, you know, 2024, um, I'm planning to go abroad, um, and then 20, I plan to build house. That's just what you are saying. Satan will start fighting that one to block it. That is not even what God has prepared. God has prepared something better. So this hidden wisdom, God is not hiding it from you, He's keeping it for you, so that you don't even mess it up. So when we say worship Him, we are thanking Him, because He opposes all things by the power of His word. Are we following, guys? So that's why it's important to spend time instead of asking, asking, because really you will ask and miss. You don't know how God will take you there. You must embrace it. I know there is something about my future that is glorious. I don't even know how you intend to achieve it. Father, thank you for my glorious future. Just focus on thanking Him because you trust Him that He will deliver. Are we following? I have to keep reminding us this so that you know the essence of worshiping God. Thank you. You can say that thank you 50 times. Lord, I'm grateful. Thank you. If you can even reflect in the year 2023, you will see those times God ordered your step. When we were entering this year, some of the things we did this year, we nobody could have prophesied it. Nobody could have predicted it. That we translated from campus. I knew it, but I don't know how God was planning to move us from the campus to a few minutes. I never knew it. But with the, I know the way the Holy Ghost was returning to me. That the, your days in campus ministry is over. Now I'm establishing you as a full-time apostle. Full apostolic ministry. But watch the way he moved us. The, our old venue that we couldn't access again. We were a, a step ahead of them. Before anything could happen, we were already in the new venue. That's how God is meant. But could I have started praying and say, Lord, uh, help me before they will they will close that church and all that. Give us a new. Can you pray that kind of prayer? You don't even know it. 
But the little you know which is his will for you, worship him. I trust you that you know. Can somebody spend the next few minutes just thanking him? Thank you for my life. Thank you for life in spirit. Thank you for what you are doing to us. Oh, we give you praise. Mighty and all knowing God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the blessings you've received this year. Thank you for we know that you've prepared something good for us. Come 2024. Thank you for we know you've prepared something glorious for our destinies. We will not fail, for you have upholding us with your two hands. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. So quickly, having said that, let me get into my real teaching in system called Babylon. Can you type it on the comment section? A system called Babylon. That's what I'm telling you. Last time I taught us on the system, the system called Egypt. But this morning, we are telling on a system called Babylon. We'll do a long reading, then I will hopefully I will start um, commenting on it. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. So Babylon in or in Bible dictionary or Bible literature stands for false religion. Babylon is the mother of all false religion. So when we say Babylon as a system, we are saying a false, a system that is that represents false religion. We don't mean the old Babylon, the ancient Babylon, you know, we mean it as a system. It stands for false religion. So when I say a system called Babylon, I'm actually referring to false religion. And by the grace of God, I will find a way where it affects us as believers. The world system today is a system I also call Babylon. For Egypt, Egypt as a system, it stands for oppression, it stands for slavery and bondage. Egypt wants to keep you as their slave. Egypt wants to cut you off from anything called God or religion. But that's not Babylon. Babylon will not fight religion. But Babylon will corrupt your religion. Let me say it again. Babylon as a system never intends to stop you from worshipping whatever God you are worshipping. But what Babylon intends to achieve in the life of a believer is to corrupt your work with God, is to infiltrate it. That the time we come, the only thing you bear can only be a title of it, that I'm a Christian. Maybe your name has the name, your Christian name. Christian names like Peter, John, Abraham. But when we look at your life, you, there, will no, there will be no form of any proof that this guy is a Christian as he claimed to be because Christianity is not really a religion Christianity is a life of Christ being lived down by men so when they were called Christians in Antioch they were called not that they chose it some people saw some set of people who were living out a certain man they know that is known as Christ Jesus they said ah this is Christians Christians mean Christ-like. So for Babylon, what Babylon intends to achieve is to corrupt your work with God. He doesn't want to stop it, no. Babylon will allow you to go to church, but yet you don't have a sound work with God. Let me not run ahead of myself. Let's read this great of scripture. Daniel chapter 1 from verse 1 to 8. I read. In the third year of the reign of Joachim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Joachim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shina, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto 
have finished the master of his enemies that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and the and of the king's seed and of the princes children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such has had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourished them three years that at the end of their, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the Enos gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshah, and to Hananiah of Shedrach, and to Mishael of Mishah, and to Azariah of Abadnego. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defy himself for the portion of the king's meat, nor the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he might not defy himself. Praise the Lord. Because of time I will, I will stop here. These guys, you know the story, historically, when Babylon came and took Israel to exile. Carry them, they excite them to Babylon. So the king selected some few people that will stand before him, men of wisdom and order. But what I want to pick up from this is Babylon wants to mix you up with other religion. That's the first thing. Babylon wants to make you to lose your identity. So they changed their name to Babylonian's name, identity. That name stands for identity. So Babylon wants to make a believer lose that identity of the child of God, that this one is a Christ Christian, that this one is Christ-like. So he wants to change your name. And then Babylon will feed you with their delicacies. This is what is happening in the world today. So we have Christians who will attend church on Sunday. They attend church, they give their tithes, they give their seed, they dance before the Lord, they can even fast and pray. Pray in tongues in capital letters. But when you meet them in the marketplace on Monday, there is nothing, there will be no proof to show that these people are Christians. They lie like others, they shit like others, they get involved with all kinds of things that they find. You know why? Because they've been stealing from the people of Babylon. Are we together? Are we together? The system of Babylon is to corrupt you. So you can be, you can have friends or in your place of work. Okay, maybe I should bring it down to this level. Sometime ago, when we are in Adyabate, one of those days, I came to class. And some of these boys, they went out to buy these alcoholic drinks, hot, all those strong drinks, brought it to class. So they, they were just selling it among themselves. I was able to spot one or two or three persons I know these ones are genuine. Meanwhile, the guy that bought that it was a Muslim. He's an unbeliever that brought it in. And then when he, 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 he saved his own, he was passing it, you can take, you can take. And I was able to spot like four or five Christians that took that and drank with him and they were helping each other. In fact, a lady I used to respect those days was among people that drank it. Later, when I went to counsel the lady, I told her, you're a child of God. I said, what is happening to you is influence, peer group influence. You want to belong. And Babylon is really feeding you well. By the time I finished speaking with that, she broke down. If not for God's intervention, that lady can finish school and her life will be fun. Because in every system, in every society, Babylon has already planted men. 
that they will feed you, they will offer you their products. So you can be in a, an office, in an office setting. When they close work, some of the men will tell you that with this joint where we used to meet. You know, why are you, why are you in the hobby to go home? Enjoy, enjoy. And then you who is a child of God, a professing Christian, we follow them. And that's really not bad. But when you get there, that's when you realize that they offer people women there. They can even pay for you to sleep with one of the girls if money is your problem. They can sponsor your dreams. They can book a hotel for you. You know this? These guys were fresh from the king's table, so they had the best of food the king had to offer. And they, 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 they don't pay for it for free. That's Babylon. So the system in the world today is Babylon. Are you with me? I remember when we were growing up. In fact, yesterday I received a speech, a speech I respect so much, was also narrating the story. I was raised in a seminary school as a young boy. But right there in our seminary school, some boys will jump the school fence, they will go out to buy pornographic books, and then they come to, when they are done reading, they pass it to you. You can read, you can read. And we were all naive, you know, innocent children who were reading those things. A little did we know what you are getting involved with. By the time we could get mobile phones, that was how we all became addicted to pornographic content. That's Babylon. Babylon will feed you their content. So a time will come, even if you want to quit, you can't quit again. Because now you are their bondage. That's the system called Babylon. False religion. Meanwhile, you can be addicted to pornographic content, all those nonsense. But yet on Sunday, your own tongue should be louder than any other person. So we have worship leaders who are living in immorality, yet they are worship leaders. So we have pastors who are sleeping with people's wives, yet they come and put it to preach on Sunday. Babylon. That's the system called Babylon. False religion. You have the whole church cliches. You have the whole church language. You can dress nice on Sunday. You can even be the head usher. But you are living in secret sin. What, what has happened is that you've eaten of the delicacy of Babylon. They have, they have managed to change your identity. But for these Hebrew boys, Daniel, he said no. Even though Babylon has managed to change our name, I will keep my consecration. So the Bible says that Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defy himself. A believer who has not proposed in his heart in, the, in this day we are living now, you will mess this up. Have you seen people, a young lady, they came to they come to propose things to you? But they will be firewood. These days, celebrity is, is, is more like a forgotten thing in the Christian world. You see a young man or to see a young girl who is not defining herself in immorality, it is difficult. Meanwhile, the system of the of, of our religion, Christianity, is that the bed must be undefiled. I think that's Hebrews chapter 13. That says that marriage is the most honorable of them all. It now says the bed undefiled. Are we together here? That the bed must be undefiled. But Babylon has managed to colonize believers. With the, with the language, but they know be firewood. Everybody know everybody they do. You can do it. You can even call you names like Sister Mary, Sister this, what are you from? Who is a virgin again? What is this man about you to be your virgin? It's strange to see a young man in our day, they, they see it like a strange thing, who is not compromising. But all of these things came into the church because the Babylon, like I said, the goal of Babylon is not to stop your worship, but the goal is to corrupt your worship. That's the goal. So the standard Jesus laid down for us is that the bed on the fight to your marriage. But Babylon said no, but it will be firewood. I've even heard certain preacher preach that masturbation is not the same. After all, it's your body. Are you seeing that? That's Babylon. All this grace message that God is not upset with you, that God is always forgiving your sin. He gives people a leverage to live in sin. 
yet Paul has taught us should we continue in sin for grace to abound? No, says God for me. So that is Babylon for us. Be going to church, but be the word. Be going to church, but let there be nothing that will prove that you are a child of God. The only thing you have is that you are called Christian, that you be a Christian then. When we stand you and then stand again and mash you up with other religions, we can't spot any single difference in you. You lie the way they lie, you shit the way they shit, you sleep with people's wife, you do all sorts of things. But on Sunday, your voice is loud and watchful. That's what we, that's where we found ourselves in today's world, a system called Babylon. So like I said, Babylon doesn't even intend to stop you from going to church. It, it does, does keep doing it as long as you are their bondage. So like we saw in the life of these Hebrew boys, they changed their name. Babylon wants you Babylon want to lose your identity, that's name. And they begin to feed you with their delegations. They have pornographic content. These days, when you go on platforms like Instagram, Facebook, all those stuff, when we were growing up, you need to maybe find the websites to see those things. But in our days, it's almost a sponsored book. Babylon has also equipped a lot of comedians. In disguise that they are doing comedy, they are actually sending pornographic content. So in their comedy content, you will still stumble into immoral stuff. Babylon is insisting that you must eat from his table, whether you like it or not. I saw a believer that wants to remain on the fire like Daniel of what in his heart. He must apply vigilance. He says, be watchful, be vigilant, and then pray and watch. Jesus didn't just say we should pray, say we should also watch because of Babylon. It's top of the following world I'm teaching. Now, let me share a practical story of how Babylon managed to, what Babylon does to a gallant believer. Isaiah chapter 39. They will read from 1 to 7. Permit me to get the scripture. The God is happy not just like Hallelujah. His sister. Oh, oh. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. I am walking in the light of God. It is a great thing to serve Jesus. It is a great to serve the Lord, it is a great thing to serve Jesus. We are walking in the light of God. In our days, God is looking for believers like Daniel and his friends who will propose in their hearts. I will not bow to the cause of Babylon, I will not defy myself with their meat, I will not defy myself with their daily cases. I choose to follow the way of the Lord. I choose to follow the way Jesus has laid down for us in the scriptures. These are the men God is looking for those days. You see, if you don't propose in your heart to follow God, Babylon will take hold of you. Babylon is living in your doorstep. Babylon is your neighbor. You, Babylon is in your office. There is a system it's everywhere. But you must propose your heart and will not bow to the system. I will not be infiltrated by their system. I will stand pure before my master. These are the believers God is looking for. Isaiah 39 from verse 1 to 7. At that time, Merodek, Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. And Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver, and the gold, and the spices, and the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house 
nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said this man? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. Then said he, What have they seen in thy house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Now take note of the next verse I want to read. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the day is come that all that is in thy house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon, and nothing shall be left, saith the Lord, of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt forget. They shall take away, and they shall be enough in the palace of the king of Babylon. Hezekiah, historically speaking, was one of the few kings those things that feared the Lord. In fact, when Hezekiah came into power, he broke down the, the idols of those fallen gods. He broke down their altars, those idols, he broke down the altars. Hezekiah was a man that feared the Lord. You should read Isaiah from chapter 36 to chapter 8. We saw how he was threatened by the king of Assyria and he sought the Lord and the Lord delivered him. We saw how Isaiah prophesied to him that he's going to die and then he sought the Lord and 15 more years was added to him. So Hezekiah was a man that feared the Lord. But here is the strange thing Hezekiah was a friend to the king of Babylon. And this is where I'm bringing this gospel to believers. So many believers, they fear the Lord, but your best friend is an unbeliever. You fear the Lord, but your best friend is a fornicator. You fear the Lord, but your best friend is a humanizer. You fear the Lord, but your best friend is a chronic smoker. You can name the list, it's not exhausting. Hezekiah feared the Lord. But he was a friend to the king of Babylon. And this is the implication. After he had recovered from his sickness that would have taken his life, Babylon sent gifts to him. Out of excitement, he began to show his secrets. Everything that made him a king, he exposed it before Babylon. Some of us, because of the friends you keep, you share your consecration with them. Because they if they don't know your secret life, they can't advise you. You begin to tell them, you know I'm still a virgin. No man has ever touched me. You are opening your secret up to Babylon. Or a young man, you know, I, after I gave my life to Christ, I proposed in my heart not to sleep around again till I get married. You know I fast often. You know I pay my tithe. You know I sow my seed. You begin to open up your secrets. And you saw the implication of that that the moment Babylon knew what made Hezekiah Hezekiah, a time came, they were all carried into captivity. That's why you know that exile, I transition this morning. So, that believer that is keeping, that is, in, that is in relationship with an unbeliever, after you've had that discussion with them, the next thing is that you will be their captain. That's when they will begin to propose things to you. But you know before I would. What do you mean that at 24 no man has touched you? You are missing something. They begin to introduce their delicacies to you. They begin to kill your consecration with God. Because I say Babylon, the goal is not to stop you from going to church. Go to your church, but be a liar. Go to your church, be a fornicator. Go to your church, be a doctor. And the implication of that at that single mistake of Hezekiah was that the prophet prophesied that in Fushion, his sons, his daughters, all that he had to be carried into captive to Babylon. Each time a believer is in league with Babylon, that is what will be. That is what, that is what it will result to our mouth. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 
6, read 14 and 15. If God is speaking to us, those messages are timely warning from the Lord to the body of Christ. It's time to wake up and come and unpack them. Second Corinthians 6, 14 and 15, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christians with Babylon? Let me stop here. I remember those days when we were together, they could wish to have a friend. All of her friends are smokers, humanizers, people that grow up and party in the house. And from, I was trying to tell her, this thing you are doing, young lady, your friends is a reflection of who you are. She says, show me your friend, and I will tell you who you are. I say, uh, Apostle, it's not like that. I'm just trying to convert it. I'm looking at her life after those days. It's obvious that Babylon converted her. Because she will hear all kinds of defiant things from her mouth. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked. They are yoked already. Don't trap yourself with them. Come out from them. Separate yourself from them. What Babylon wants to do is to colonize you. To make you lose your identity. I've thought that already. To make you lose your identity. To make you there is no difference, there will be no difference between you and the world. The church is known as a Christian. It means the called out. We are not supposed to look like the world. We are the called out. We are those who should be the light to a dark world. But unfortunately in our days, the believers we have today have been colonized by Babylon. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9, it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We have been separated from darkness. We are in light now. We are supposed to show our light. Are you guys with me? Are you here? So the Christian has been called out. Even though you are living in a system, you are existing in the midst of that system called Babylon. Babylon is not supposed to sink you. Hope you know it is not the water around the boat that sinks the boat. It is the water that makes its way into the boat. As long as there is no water, as long as the waters cannot come into the boat, there is no way that boat can sink. So you can be existing in Babylon. For years, we are not to fight. Daniel and his friends spent their entire life in Babylon, but they never bowed to the cause of Babylon. These are the believers God is looking for. So in your offices, a lot of common practices can be going on. If you know you are called out, you are a peculiar person, you are a chosen generation, you are the light of the world, like you say, then you will stand out from the power. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 and 14 it says that you are the salt of the earth. It says, but if the salt have lost its savour, where will it shall it be salted? He now say it is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. When the moment the salt loses its savour, its death, it is of no use again. Men will begin to step on them. The reason why Christianity seems that today, you see what happened during lockdown, they locked, they closed down the street. Because the church to them doesn't really seem to be like an important institution. But some places we are open. But the church was locked down. But in the days of the early believers, these are men who turned the world upside down. But because now we have Christians, pastors, church leaders, who are bringing shame to the name of the church. That is what it means that we are being thrown, we are being cast on the ground, and men are walking on top of us. I've shared with us how one time in school, somebody called me after exam to pay bribe. Meanwhile, the person that called me called me pastor. 
when he called me he greeted me and said pastor good morning and then he began to make his proposal and i asked him what did you just call me you called me a pastor yet you are asking me to be bride i don't blame him it's because many believers have lost their sabbath they've lost their the test now the world is, is, is stepping on us as God by the be in church but be alive even Christians are now living mamas having children out of wedlock and there are some of them God forbid are still workers in the church baby mamas some of them are cohabiting with a man who has not paid their bride price that is what Babylon has brought in everybody in the world. That's what we say. But in the firewood. Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. The Bible says that we must be holy because our God is holy. Holiness means that God is on his own class. And that if we claim to serve a God who is holy, the, the, the condition, the standard is that you must be holy. First Peter chapter 15 and 16. Be ye holy, for I, your God, is holy. God is on his own separate level. He's, he's on his own class. Holiness means set apart. And the Bible says we must be set apart. So like Daniel, Meshach and Abednego and Chedlak in the land of Babylon. These men were on their own cross. They were magicians. They were astrologers. Because what Babylon does is to mix religion. The other day I was collecting my people to tell them that our God is not the same God with the God of the Muslims. Some people believe that it's the same God. No, it's not the same God. We don't serve the same God with them. Our God is not the same God that I do worship as you worship. Yes, they all call him God. We don't worship the same God with them. Are we following? Our God is not the same God with all of these mixed religions. This is our God. First John chapter 4 from verse 1. But it says below, believe not every spirit but try to see whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone up into the world how? he now says hereby know ye the spirit of God every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is of God and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is not of God so when you want to talk to a Muslim, for example, they say, ah, I believe in God, and I believe in God. But they refuse to confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They, are, they don't have the same God with us. You meet, you, you talk to an idol watch, but say, ah, I will, I will come on now, we believe in God. In Hebrew, it's called Shukur, because they call the Creator. But he refused to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. So we don't serve the same God. So right there in, in, at, at Babylon, there were all kinds of funny, funny religions that the king brought together. That's what Babylon is trying to do, to have what we call a mixed religion. But no, we are on our own class because our God is on his own class. Come out among them, the Bible says. Be ye separate. So if every other person is doing it, he says, no way. I propose in my heart not to defy myself. Are we following? Are we following? So like I said, Babylon's goal is to colonize you. It's to convert you to its system. To make you blend into its own system. That's Babylon for you. That's just what he wants to achieve. To make you blend into its system. So God is looking for believers like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who refuse to bow to the status of Nebuchadnezzar. Maybe we'll read it. Daniel chapter 3, 15. Now the king was blagging. Who is that God that will deliver you? When the, the three Hebrew boys says that our God is able to save us. But even if he doesn't, we won't bow to your God. These are the kind of believers God is looking for. You know, like somebody asked me to go, to ah, that course we did and all that, did you pray for, I should pay for what? What kind of nonsense is that? 
in the office uh, there is a promotion coming ah uh, 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 have you have you gone to see this ogre with something no we don't go we don't do that we don't bow down to that system that men cut corners before they get promotion our god is able to promote us there are offices where you must sleep with the big boss before you are promoted there are offices where you must sleep with the big boss before you are transferred to a better place these are the system of babylon and unfortunately many believers have compromised this they've slept with you married people to get a certain position the faith flies to receive appointments sometimes in our nation nigeria it's actually politicians like that i won't mention his name who was lobbying for a position of um, um, the, the head of house of representative the lower chamber the yellow man i don't want to mention his name and he, he saw his picture it trended and he went to mecca to let me, let me call it worship now to worship with the muslims because the president then is a muslim meanwhile this man is a christian but because he's looking for a political appointment he went to mecca to worship the way the muslims worship today he's uh, he, he's been given a good position in government some men who are lost in babylon this is what babylon intends to do we have offers we have things for you but you must bow to our god but for these three boys, they refuse to bow Get the end result because if Babylon cannot colonize you, you must be colonized Babylon. And so God is looking for people who will colonize Babylon, not the other way around. Maybe we should read verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the body freely furnace and spake and said, Shed light, Meshach and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God. When, when the world see that you are unbroken, you are unshaken in your faith. They will recognize your God. You servants of the Most High God. This was the same thing that was bragging in verse 15. That who is that God that will save you out of my heart? But when they stood their ground and God appeared on that furnace, the same king that was questioning their God begin to recognize their God. Are you are you following what I'm saying? Because if you know for the end of the story, the king proclaimed that nobody will speak ill of the God of the Hebrew voice and that his their God is the only God who can deliver. Do we still have those believers who can prove that our God is the God of the universe? When every other person is compromising, he said, no way, my God is able to supply all my needs according to his wishes in glory by Christ Jesus. So I will not bow. So I will not compromise. At first, when you start being that stubborn, they will say, Ah, don't mind him. Everybody has a price. We will offer him what he cannot resist. He will bend. But after a while, when they now see that you are not bending, they will begin to recognize your God. They will begin to recognize something that is upon you. God is calling on us to repentance as a church. So 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 17. He says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. That's holiness. Say yet the Lord. And touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. Come out among them. Separate yourself from those corrupt systems. Separate yourself from this corrupt standard. Refuse to be like them god is looking for the antioch christians men who the world will recognize them based on their lifestyle not based on what they say but the way they were living their daily life they were reflecting jesus and they were called christian that's why god is calling the body again the antioch christians not just people who can profess christianity but they, there is no proof that they are Christians. God is looking for such people in our days. God is looking for ladies who can stand their ground and say, no, the bed is on the fight till I get married. God is looking for young men who will say, no, 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 no. I refuse to compromise. 
is a such man who God is looking for. Who will look Babylon and say, Babylon, even if I'm insisting in this system, I will not bow. I will not eat of your delicacies. I will not bow to your God. I will not keep to your standard. Our God is able to save us. Can somebody pray this morning and say, Lord, give me the grace to say no. To say no. To say no to Babylon. To say no to the offers of the world. Help me like children, which I can about them to stand in days of trials. So that I can defend your name that is holy. I will not bow. I will not compromise. I will not bow. I will not forsake the old way of the Lord. Oh, can somebody pray? Can somebody pray? Can somebody pray? Oh, Hezekiah lost everything because he was a Christian, a man who loved God, but yet he was a friend to Babylon. Many Christians have lost great things because they were in alignment with Babylon. Many pastors have lost their calling just associating with Babylon. You see what happened during the time of election? Many who were not prophets began to prophesy. They lost their bishop ring. They lost their priesthood. Because Babylon could bite their mouth. Babylon have something to offer them. They began to give fake prophecies so that they will be invited and be offered envelope. But Lord, I refuse to be a false prophet. I refuse to bow to the system of Babylon. Oh, I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. In the name of Jesus. Let only you be seen. Let only you be seen. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Let only you be seen. Let only you be seen, oh, oh. over my life, oh Yahweh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Let only you be seen. Let only you be seen. Over Nigeria, Yahweh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Let only you be seen. Let only you be seen, oh, oh. over my life, oh Yahweh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Somebody cry, say, Lord, I will reflect my light. My light will shine forth. He says that you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are that city that is set in the hill that cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. My light will shine. My banner will fly high. Oh, somebody, somebody pray, somebody. 